everyone, welcome back to Shrine Hunters, the only series that expanded both Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild games that talked about every single shrine in the game. Well, fantastic. Today, we are going to be making our way to all of the Linder's Brow Skyview Tower locations. There's going to be 11 in this video in total, 8 on the surface, and then we're going to be tackling the 3 in the sky. And this is when we start getting into shrines that are hidden within caves, so there may be some that you actually don't know. On screen is going to be the 8 shrines that we are going to be looking at, everything that is a diamond right now are shrines that are regular shrines that are visible from the sky meaning that you could go either on the sky or whatever else and put down your pins at exactly where they are any that are marked with a star such as these two and also this one that i'm literally on top of right now are going to be shrines that are hidden within cave systems also, these two I've already made my way to, so that's all eight. So Future Austin is going to put the order that these are going to be on the surface, and then the order that these are going to be in the sky. So five of the eight shrines that are on the surface are going to be out in the open, including this one right here by the New Serene Stable, this one right here by the stable that I didn't touch yet, there is this one right here, this one right here, and this one that my horse is currently covering. Let's cover these five real quick. Starting here with the Maku Kurish Shrine. And this is Combat Training Archery, which is different from the last archery that we did somehow. Oh, because this one isn't about bullet time. It's just shoot the guy. Good job, you shot the guy. Now you gotta shoot all the guys. Good job, you shot all the guys. Make sure to grab the mob drops and... And our bonus chest contains... A Strong Construct Bow. I'm gonna replace my Strong Construct Bow with a Strong Construct Bow. And that's this shrine complete. Next up right here is gonna be the Runa Kit Shrine. And this is built to carry. Oh, I like this one. So I've done all of these shrines at least twice already. And there are some of them that like, they, they do like a really good implementation of the mechanics or a slight variation of the mechanics. And I always really enjoy the ones that it's like, okay, you have to build something that could transport something somewhere. And this one excels at it phenomenally. The first step is take the big old ball and then have him slide down. Or he kind of glides or grinds down. It doesn't actually roll, which is weird. Your next task is very similar. However, the rails are more spread apart. So because of that, you have to be able to bridge that gap. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking these two logs, attaching them. I'm going to grab it from as the center as I can. And then I'm going to line it up with the ball down here. For whatever reason, if you try to line up the ball while it's on this flat surface, it may be very difficult to get them to line up straight, but while it's in that, I'm gonna call it a sand pit, while it's in that sand pit, it's actually gonna be much easier to get these four logs to be perpendicular with one another. Doing so is gonna create four perpendicular logs with the ball in the middle. You can then just go ahead place it on the rail, and because the ball is hanging below that, it's not gonna be able to slide off of either side. I'm just going to push it a little bit forward to give it some b better momentum. Perfect. From here, you do not need the logs, so let's get rid of them. Before we continue on with the challenge, here's going to be the bonus chest, which you could do one of two ways. One, you can make a nice little contraption to walk on over there, or we're going to do my favorite thing, which is just, you know, the recall elevator. I'm going to put that there, then we're going to lift it up, and then we're going to bring it back. To a nice safe starting position, stand on top of it, and have it bring us over. This reminds me of like people movers in, in airports. Our bonus chest is gonna get us a garbage construct bow. That's the reason my last slot is just for bows that I never ever want. Now in order to get the ball to the other side, we're going to need to create proper counterbalance or secure it properly. So for that, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to take this two by four, attach it to this right angle 2x4, grab another 2x4, and I'm going to be attaching it at a 45 degree angle. Then I'm going to take this entire structure, secure it to the ball, and doing so is going to make, I guess, essentially a giant question mark. <laughs> Did not realize that I was doing that. But yeah, there we go. And then all we have to do is place it on the rail, and it's going to slide down no problemo. It's the Riddler. Now all that's left is to put the ball into the hole. We're done with the shrine, great. From here, we're gonna be making our way to the Oromuak Shrine, and this is gonna be a launching device. 
Something I would like to note here is that if you wanted to, you can actually use this opportunity to fuse rockets to a whole bunch of your shields, because who doesn't always want more rocket shields? And then after the game realizes, hey, there's no more rocket here, it will just go ahead and respawn another one for you. So very handy stuff. All you have to do is take a rocket and then rotate it one way forward, make sure it's up on the angle, and then launch her off. Now, while you're in this room, before you continue, you're gonna go ahead and grab both of the rockets, attach them to one another. And here in the second room, we are going to just put them on the back of this minecart. Try to center it as much as you can. Centering it will make sure that it doesn't go crazy flying off the rails. And we're gonna get up here, no problem. Before we continue on, those rocket shields that you made are gonna come in handy now. If you look up here, that's going to be our bonus chest located in the corner opposite of those rockets. We're just going to rocket shield up after you're above it. Before the rocket runs out, you want to take out your paraglider because otherwise you'll hit the ceiling and then you won't be able to take out your paraglider in time. And we get a ruby here. Nice. You may want to take this opportunity to replenish your rocket shields. Now go ahead and take one of the minecarts and we're going to attach it to the front of a rocket over here. Get the minecart perfectly inside of the guidelines. Attach the rocket at its predetermined angle and activate it. That's going to jet us over the chasm. And that's this shrine complete. Next is going to be the Kiyoyu Shrine located right here on the map. And this is fire and ice. Oh, this one, this one took me a little while to figure out. So there is a more difficult way to do this, which is bring the ice close to the fire and have it melt. Or there is an easier way to do this, which is bring the ice next to the switch. And if you have a fire weapon or a fire shield, go ahead and equip it. And now we're just going to constantly try to bring it as close to the switch as we can. After it fits in, we're going to try to hold it up and then bring it on top of the switch. And then we're going to let go and then immediately change your shield so it stops melting. Alternatively, you would have taken it closer to the fire and then had to go back and forth and it's a pain. Nice part is once the ice is done, you can then remove it from the switch and place it down right here. We're going to make ourselves a rewind elevator for the bonus chest. By placing it up, bringing it back down, climbing it on top, using recall. Our bonus chest is going to get us a Zonaite Spear, which goes right in the bin. Just leave the ice where it is for now, and we're going to go ahead and glide up this wind stream. You're going to see a large piece of stone. We're going to then take this 8x8 piece of stone and block the flames. Remove the ice and place it on the platform. Then grab your 8x8 piece of stone, place it on top of the ice, and try to get it as centered as possible because the ice is able to slide down this spike path, but the stone cannot. If it doesn't slide to the bottom properly, try squaring off the piece of stone to the piece of ice. But once you get down here for the next bit, it's actually important that our ice is going to be squared off to the giant piece of stone. Flip it over to make sure that the stone is going to be protecting the ice and place it down on the switch. You could either use the piece of ice that came down with you or the ice that was down here from the start. I didn't have it squared off with that piece of ice, so it melted, the door opened, and then immediately closed, and the shrine is done. Up next is the Sinakawak Shrine next to the New Serene Stable, and this is an uplifting device. My first time doing this, uh, it did not go well, not gonna lie. But now that I understand it, this is like a fundamental thing. One of my auto builds I use all of the time. We're going to take our 4x4 and we're going to attach the hot air balloon to the middle of it. Next, we're going to be grabbing one of these torch pedestals. And before you try to configure on where it's going to be placed, I recommend getting on top because even soon as it's close, it's going to start floating up. You do not have to place it perfectly in the middle, especially for such a small temporary device that you're not taking anything out on. When it comes to building this in the real world using a flame emitter, you definitely want to put it in the middle of the basket. Anyways, once we're high enough, we're going to glide off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use recall on it to bring it lower and get ready with ultra hand. And once it's in range, I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and then use it for this up switch right here. If it's too far out of the way, you could either go back and 
bring it closer or you could do some sort of setup with this right here by taking this torch, lighting it on fire and then fusing it to that hot air balloon. Our next room, you're gonna be starting up high and we're gonna jump down low. We're going to grab this hot air balloon, place it in the middle of this four x four. We're gonna grab this orb. We're gonna place it on the pedestal. We're gonna grab one of these torches and we're gonna place it opposite of the orb. Next, I'm just going to take this and move it as close to the wall as I can, and let's go set up the hot air balloon for the bonus chest. For the bonus chest, we're gonna grab this hot air balloon and make our way over to these flame emitters. From here, we're gonna turn off one of the flame emitters. We're gonna put it inside of the hot air balloon. We're going to then attach it to the orb. It doesn't matter if it's not clean. We're gonna bring it next to the wall, and let's go ahead and activate the device. That's going to fill up the hot air balloon with air and lift the ball up. It's okay if it's not going straight, as long as it's near the wall. Now let's use this ladder to climb our way up. Your first platform with the small orb is going to be on here and is required for the small switch, so I'm going to bring it over here. Detach the entire thing, have the ball fall down. The large orb is going to be required for the large pedestal. I'm going to lift it up and bring it through, and then we're going to go ahead and detach it from the orb. Get rid of the balloon. The large orb goes in the large hole. Our bonus chest is going to be including one opal. Okay, that's 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 pretty cheap of you, but okay. Thanks. Thanks, bonus chest. Small orb goes in the small hole. And that's going to be this shrine complete. We're now going to be making our way onto the three shrines that are not visible from the sky that require some sort of puzzle or cave in order to accomplish. The first one is going to be located directly next to our Skyview Tower. It's located right here and it requires you to enter the Linder's Brow Cave. All you need to do is make your way on inside. If you go up, that's that's not where we're going. We're going down here. I am going to on purpose not get the Booble Gem because I'm saving that for a different video series. But if you want to go get the booble gem, go for it. Meanwhile, uh, if you come on in here, it's going to be pretty out in the open. Really hard to miss. It's going to be super easy to see. Barely an inconvenience. And this is the Taki Ihaban Shrine, which is just a blessing for figuring out how to walk inside of a cave. Nice. Large zone I charge. And that's our shrine complete. For this shrine that's going to be located right here between Nero Hill and Piper Ridge, you're going to need to make your way to the bottom of Tanagar Canyon. So, from the stable which is located right here, we're just going to go ahead and glide on down. And this is the Tanagar Canyon West Cave of the Tabantha Frontier. Upon making your way inside, you're going to see a big old broken floor and a lot of rocks. If you have a multi-shot bow, now is probably a good time to use it. If you've already unlocked your Nobo, he would be fantastic for here. But as you make your way through the wall, oh, watch out for the mini taluses. Be sure to go ahead and eat them. But if you have yourself a nice two-handed stick, you're probably going to be getting some rocks. And you may want to use that to break your way through the wall. Making our way through is going to present us with a long corridor. At the end of the corridor, you're going to be finding a frost like like. After dealing with that inconvenience, he's going to be in front of a very large rock wall. Let's make our way through it. Heading out on the other side, we're going to find another corridor with a shock choo-choo. We're also going to be having some mini taluses in here. Be sure to, to dispose of them. You're going to be seeing a blue rock wall and a regular rock wall. We're going to break our way through the regular rock wall. Pretty sure the booble frog is behind the blue wall. Keep in mind, after you swing with a two-handed weapon, you can hit the jump button for an animation cancel to break your way through the wall faster. And making our way to the end, but hugging the right side, you're going to be finding this shrine. And this is going to be the Ion Orok Shrine, the right roll. This one is equally parts fun and frustrating. First, we're gonna take the orb, drop it down, it hits the target. Great. In the second room, we're gonna be taking the two orbs, sticking them together, and then we're gonna be lining them up over the ridge so that they roll in a pair down to the target. Try to get them as level as possible. And your final room is gonna present you with three sizes of balls. I have had the most consistent success with large and medium. Now for this, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and place them sort of in the middle as possible. That's then gonna give us enough of an arc, that way they're going to roll down and hit our switch. If it didn't hit the switch, you may need to adjust with exactly where in reference to the middle you're going to be placing it, but it's definitely the large and the medium. You do not need the small one at all. And that's going to be our shrine complete. Great. 
The next one that we are going to be making our way to is over here, right past Nero Hill, south of Kuho Mountain. I hope that's how that is pronounced. And I'm pretty sure you can go into either of these holes. We're going to go to the second one because the second one's already open. It's just one cave underneath that connects to both. And I know that the second one is where we need to actually exit from because right there is the shrine. You can see it right there, right? but the gem is underneath the ground. We also have two frost-like lakes to deal with. Okay, so down here we have our crystal. If you choose to examine the crystal, you're gonna be seeing some text on, hey, I need you to bring me upstairs, but we know exactly where it's going already. Luckily for us, we have these two missiles nearby. I'm gonna recommend you put down a save before you start doing this, because it can go astray very quickly. With your save down, the most important part is we're going to be marking exactly what our final location is gonna be. It's that yellow pin over there, because our trouble now is we need to get it out of the crater. I laid it flat, and I put this rocket on at a 45 degree angle. And then you kinda wanna look at it from the side to be like, okay, if that shoots straight, is it gonna go up? Honestly, I think it's a little far right now. Let's move it a little bit closer. Okay, it looks like it might work. Now, in case your weapons decide to knock it off course, I'm gonna use an arrow. Okay, well, it bounced off somewhere, but it's up there. Using a send, we could pop our head on out and, oh, I found the crystal. Uh, yeah, I would like you to come really far back, if you don't mind. And then, Perfect, it's just gonna fall down. Now, I'll admit, this isn't the cleanest solution, but they're rockets, so it's it's a lot of trial and error. That's the importance of putting that save down. And you have to engage with the hand thing before it accepts the crystal, even though the crystal is literally inside of it right now, which is just a nice, easy blessing. Ooh, a big battery, nice. And this shrine is done. If this is your first time coming here, you actually don't need to make your way to the top of this very large floating island. All you need to do is make your way to the bottom, which I think is around 300 meters up, not this extremely high height all the way up there. Now we're not doing that. Instead, we're just floating right down here into this little pond. We're gonna speak with Stuart over here, and Stuart is gonna talk about the skydive ceremony. Your first run is going to be not timed, and as long as you complete it by going through all the rings, you're gonna be able to unlock the shrine, activate the hand sticky thingy, and just make your way through all these loops as simply as possible. By the way, if you complete it again under the time limit that he instructs, which is 35 seconds, you're gonna get your piece of skydive armor. Definitely recommend. And from the skydive ceremony practice, you're gonna get access to this shrine. This is the Ton Hiai Shrine, or however it's pronounced, and this is combat training for archery. This is all about bullet time and headshots for crits. So make your way up on the fan, use a not good bow, make sure you land a headshot and land. And then do it again, but instead three enemies. That's gonna go ahead and unlock the door for us. Make sure to grab your mob drops and your bonus chest containing a strong construct bow. And that's our first shrine done. From completing our shrine here on Courage Island, I'm now in my game with a lot more progress. And the reason is because the islands that we need to go to are up there. Yeah, those things, that's how far away we need to go to actually reach these. Using one of my favorite little tricks, let's come over here and talk to Stuart, who's in charge of the diving ceremony. Let's donate one zone I charge. And then as soon as we start off, let's go ahead and plop down a travel medallion. That's the reason that I needed to be here later in progress. The reason I did it here is that travel medallion is gonna take us from height 600, which is the bottom of this spring, to the top of Courage Island, which is 1600. We just raised 1000 meters, which is fantastic. The light dragon is up there because I haven't taken the master sword out yet. Do not take the master sword out until you look at all the geoglyphs. And now we can see that the islands that we need to make our way to are gonna be this one up here and this higher one up here. Okay, in order to get over there, we are going to need to build something of our own. So I'm gonna take out one bird. I'm gonna take out three fans, two rockets, and also a steering stick. And just for good measure, I'm also gonna take out a battery as well. Using all that, let's take out auto build and you probably have the fan plane schematic from when you, you actually got auto build. That'll save us a few seconds of time here. Control stick in the middle. Put the rockets on at 45 degree angles because we need not just distance, but also altitude. And this battery, I'm going to attach it to the middle of the back fan. 
Now let's take take off. We gained a little bit of altitude, which is nice. And now we're going to pull back on the steering stick ever so slightly. And we should definitely make it from over here to over here. All right, you may need two batteries. If you didn't know, if you choose to use one of the large Zonai charges, then you get a, uh, a full restore of your battery. And then on top of that, you also get like this, I, I'm going to call it a battery buffer. That it's just temporary battery that it chews through before it actually goes down to your battery meter. So, when you're about to run out, if you need to go a long distance still, it might be worth sacrificing one of those large Zonai charges. We're also going to need two levels of cold protection because it's very cold up here. Just in time to bring us to the Tabantha Sky Archipelago, where now we're in a low atmosphere area. And this is the Gano Shrine that requires us to bring a crystal back. Oh, well, it turns out we uh, we didn't need to land this high up anyways, because we need to head down here for the crystal. And this is going to be a flux construct battle. Oh, yeah, he's a Mark III. OK. Oh, and this is in low gravity, so it is a little annoying. But if you have a Captain Four Reaper, then you're good. So I'm going to put on my barbarian armor. It also makes jump attacks and flurry rushes a little bit weird. And if you can't reach the middle, what I do, I don't know if it's the most effective, is you can just start pulling away pieces, and then eventually he's all just gonna come apart. And fantastic. Flux Construct is KO'd, and we get that Flux Core. On this island, if you come to this area, you're actually gonna be finding that there's a few different hovercraft builds, just like ready and waiting to go you're also going to find that there's a whole bunch of extra batteries so you might as well just take out the extra batteries and put them on your 4x4 metal grate let's put the crystal on our hovercraft let's put it at a position that it's going to be i don't know at least kind of balanced make sure it's not on a battery because once the battery goes then the crystal is going to fall off power it up you can see it's not weighted very well but all we have to do is lean slightly in the direction of the shrine this is also a pretty top-notch auto build that I would recommend. The most difficult part is there's no ability to control the downward force. You just need to, you know, kind of hope that you're going to fall in the right place. Of course, you can always control it at the last second for a little bit of mobility, but it only does so much. Just throw the entire machine into the shrine and it's done. And this is the Gano Shrine, which is just a simple blessing, like a majority of the shrine quests in this game. And we got a diamond. Very nice. I only have a small amount of those. And that's our shrine done. The very last shrine we need to make our way to in this entire region is going to be located over here in the Tabantha Sky Archipelago. And one of the neat things about this is if you just did the previous shrine with me, we could actually just float on down to where those, I'm just going to call them hovercrafts, even though they're definitely not hovercrafts, where those hovercrafts were. And if you are doing that, we could even use our auto build to just grab all of the pieces and have it construct it for us. Make sure you do not pick the auto build that has the shrine crystal on it. Because that'll cost three zonite and it won't do anything. And let's just go and glide on up to our destination, which is this big old island in the sky. At the very top of the island, we're going to be seeing a hand portal. Let's go over here and activate it. That's going to go ahead and drain the water and then all the all the sky Arakuda are going to be really upset and they're going to be all flopping around all over the place. Definitely go around and grab those fish. There's also some hardy bass here and a fourth hardy bass. Feel free to take on the constructs if you want, although it's not mandatory at all. And we're just going to make our way inside where we're going to have a rock wall. Destroy the rock wall, head inside. If you didn't do the regional phenomena in the Gerudo region, this may be your first experience with mirrors. But it's not a very difficult one at all. Anyways, if we look to the right with the mirror shield, we're going to be seeing a mirror on the floor, which is which is two platforms away. Aim the mirror toward the next one. And now we're going to grab it, face it downward, and look for the next one. Doing this, you're ensuring that these mirrors are going to be the perfect distance apart, and you're not going to have any issues with your angles. Number three, we're going to face it downward. We see our final platform over here. And then we're actually going to be facing it toward this strange looking thing over there. Whatever that is, that's what we're facing it to. And he is either going to be holding or trying to fuse a mirror. But bottom line is there's one here. If for whatever reason you can't use it, feel free to use a mirror shield. 
or take one out of your inventory and just face it toward this large gem over here. That's then gonna go ahead and open up the doors and let all the light in, it's beautiful. And there's a chest up here. You might wanna go grab that. And it's the Zonite Helm, which makes it so that any Zonai devices that you're going to be operating are now more efficient in their battery consumption. And as far as the Shrine of Light goes, we're just going to be taking the stairs down from this room. We're going to be seeing a gumball dispenser over to the right and stairs that lead right to the shrine. I'll be honest with you, I don't know if you had to do the mirror part, but you wanted that armor anyways, right? And this is the Gaas's shrine, or to the best of my pronunciation. And there's a star fragment, very nice. And that's our shrine complete. And with that, that's going to be all three of the shrines in the sky complete, as well as all of the shrines on the surface complete and the caves complete. Well, fantastic. If there's any feedback that you guys have, let me know because it's obviously been a while since we've done anything like this. Honestly, it's fun going through all of these shrines again because I've done all of them at least once. And now that I'm looking at it with fresh eyes, sometimes I'll re-record segments two or three times over for what I think is going to be like the easiest to replicate or just, you know, the most fun to cheese. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. On screen, you should have the next episode if it's live yet. And then you should also be having the playlist to Shrine Hunters 2's at the Kingdom. So there you go. Easy links for you. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, Austin John out.